Hello, my name is Rebecca Loving, and today we'll be talking to you about scalable and accurate long read sequencing transcriptome quantification with LR Callista. I am a 2019 DOE CSGF fellow, and I work with Lear Proctor at Caltech. So first, a roadmap. First, we'll go over the central dogma to give us some biological context for my work, then the clinical significance of this work, um, some of the technologies that are used to produce the data that I work with, um, some of the challenges that still exist in processing this data, the algorithm that we have developed to um, analyze it, the results of using our algorithm, and then the application of um, using our algorithm to study new biological questions with um, some machine learning. So first, the central dogma. All organisms um, have DNA, and this DNA is then transcribed into RNA, which is translated into proteins. And this is a highly dynamic process. Um, we want to study proteins in order to understand uh, what is biologically happening within the cell, how um, different expression of different DNAs can impact the health or disease state. And um, there are uh, many contributing factors to this. So for instance, there's about 2000 transcription factors, which are RNA that actually um, then go back and impact the way that DNA is transcribed. And there's about 1,000 RNA binding proteins that go back and impact the way that RNA is translated. Um, and each of these different uh, steps of the expression of the genome into what produces living organisms and the function of living organisms have different lifespans and impact the body and the cell at different stages. So in order to study disease, we can really study it at this molecular level. So studying mRNA um, allows us to study the proteins and study uh, drug interactions, but then also develop better drugs uh, for treating uh, patients that have diseases or patients that have um, different things that they live with. Um, and so one of the ways that we can do this is with genomics and transcriptomics that are from a specific person that when then we can look at how those genomics and transcriptomics might be impacting what we can visibly see um, in their disease state. And so we can do this with systems biology, computational models, and then mine biological knowledge of how the regulation is actually taking place and how the molecules are interacting and what the function of the different molecules are and what the function of the drugs are in the different patients and how the drugs might be interacting or not interacting, um, and how how to better target different um, therapies for different patients. So to study this, we must study RNA, and RNA can be studied in two general ways, uh, short read RNA sequencing and long read RNA sequencing. In both cases, you're trying to look at what genes are expressed within the cells or within the tissue, and so you can look at the different ways that it's expressed in the short reads by looking at the fragments of the molecules that were there and trying to assemble them into what most likely um, they originated from, what structures they originated from. And then you can quantify that um, in the long read RNA sequencing, on the other hand, you are capturing the full length molecule. So you don't need to do the same assembly process of the fragmented reads. Instead, you can directly try to count what molecules were present in your sample. Um, and this allows us to have isoform resolution and also improved annotations for both humans and model organisms, but also move into the non-model organisms, annotating those genomes so that we can understand more and more biology and the complexity that exists in the animal kingdom. So one of the technologies that we can do use to do long read sequencing is PacBio. Uh, PacBio recently innovated to get to 0.1 to 1.5% uh, error, and it uses fluorescent technology to tag the base pairs um, with fluorescence 
and um, allow us to read off the fluorescent signature of the sequences. ONT sequencing, on the other hand, allows us to read off the electric current signal of the different base pairs. And it uses actually a uh, machine learning method to read off what the sequence is most likely to have been from that electric current. And so with improvements in the nanopore and the motor protein, um, as well as the base calling algorithm that reads off the sequence from the electric signal, um, it's gotten to 0.1 to 1.5% error rate. So one of the key questions that I wanted to answer as I started my graduate work was, does the three prime end alone hold sufficient information to predict isoformic expression accurately? I.e., can the three prime end reveal key alternative splicing patterns? Because the three prime end is what we are often getting in short read methods, um, but it doesn't necessarily contain all the alternative splicing pattern information that's really important because we know different isoforms actually have different functionality. So first, before we can answer that question, we need to be able to actually quantify long read RNA sequencing accurately. And what we've found is that a lot of the long read tools don't aren't both scalable and efficient and accurate. Um, so isoquant is one of the most accurate tools, but it really does not scale well. Um, but in short read RNA seq, the, the scalability and efficiency and accuracy have all really been met by the tools Callisto and SAM. So in short read mapping, you have that a query from your seed, um, from your read you take a seed from your read, um, can be extended to see where it matches best in the reference. Um, whereas in long reads, this becomes too um, computationally expensive to do only with extending. Instead, you need to also use a chaining approach because you get a lot more spurious queries that are mapping to places in the reference that you want to ignore because those sequencing error rate is much higher in long read RNA-seq than in short read RNA-seq. Um, so one of the solutions that has been used is chaining. In um, LR Callisto, we do use something that resembles chaining, which we'll talk about next. So first, a little background on LR Callisto. LR Callisto expands on Callisto to uh, make it suitable for long reads. And so it does this. Um, in two different strategies, but for us to get the background, Callisto is built on a transcript de Brungath. And so here we have an example transcript de Brungath of three different transcripts, pink, blue, and green. And we have a black read being um, mapped within this transcript de Brungath. So first to create the transcript de Brungath, you just have uh, cameras that you pull out of your transcripts and where the transcripts are the same as each other can be collapsed into a single node. And then when they differ, they, the tree branches. But we only need to look at nodes at the beginning and the end of the collapses. So this read, for example, we only need to look at this node and then we can jump past where they're the same to look at this node and this node, it's not compatible with this node. So we only look at these ones and then we can find that it ends here. So we see that this uh, read is compatible in this region. It has a strand compatibility class with blue, pink, and green. And then it also has a transcript compatibility class with blue and pink. And then we take the intersection. So in LR Callisto, um, and in Clisto, you need to be able to remove the ambiguity of reads that are mapping to multiple transcripts. And so to remove this ambiguity, you do expectation maximization. When you use expectation maximization, you have a likelihood that you're maximizing. So here is our likelihood. And um, in this likelihood, you have the transcript compatibility classes here that we're maximizing. And then you have the abundance estimates for the transcript and you have this effective length normalization. Um, and the effective length is actually different um, in 
LR Callisto, then in Callisto, in Callisto, you assume a Gaussian distribution of the lengths of the fragments because you're not getting the full length molecules. Whereas in LR Callisto, you actually are getting the full length molecules. So we do not assume a Gaussian and instead we actually estimate the mean length for each transcript. Um, and then on the right hand side here, we have an example of the expectation maximization where we start with a uniform um, distribution over the transcript abundances. Um, that's how it's initialized. And then we use the expectation to actually look at what we are seeing in the data. And then we maximize based on what we're seeing on the data, the likelihood of the different transcript abundances. And we repeat this until we have convergence. So in LR Callisto, you also have that we change the K-more size from a default K-more size of 31 to a default K-more size of 63. And this is because with uh, short reads, you have highly accurate data, highly accurate sequences. And with long reads, even though the sequencing error rate has dramatically reduced, it's still much higher. And so you want to get high quality KMORs and you also want to reduce your amount of multi-mapping. Um, and so changing the KMOR length from 31 to 63 really reduces the complexity of the transcript the boon graph that you're mapping the reads within, which really improves the accuracy of um, your quantification. So now to look at some of the results, um, this is on um, PacBio IsoSeq sim simulation of six millimeters. And on the right hand side, it's on an ONT nano sim simulation of about 30 million meads. And on the y axis of each of these plots, you have the ground truth transcript level count. And on the x axis, you have the tool um, estimated transcript level count. And we compare LR Callisto to Isoquant and Bamboo, which are very popular to tools, and Orfish, which is a new tool. And you can see that in concordance correlation coefficient, LR Callisto outperforms all the other tools across um, both BackBio and ONT. And with normalized root mean squared, our Callisto also really outperforms the other tools. And then to, um, to assess the reproducibility across uh, biological, um, across technical replicates, um, we also looked at the LRGAS benchmarking data. And here we also see that LR Callisto is really comparable in its reproducibility um, using concordance correlation coefficient of expression and concordance correlation coefficient of isoform coefficient of variation. So now um, to try to answer our key question, we also developed guide A, which is a gene unambiguous isoform deduction extraction algorithm. And so this is a machine learning approach for isoform prediction and gene isoform network detection from 3' RNA C. So here, TCC means transcript compatibility class and TPM means transcripts per million. And so the problem set up is that you start with, of, with inputs of 3 prime end TCC, and then your outputs are the full length transcript abundances, which are to say the full length molecule abundance estimates versus the 3 prime end transcript compatibility counts, which are what you have just from the alignment part without the um, expectation maximization. So we want to find the mapping between this uh, three prime n transcript compatibility counts and the full length uh, transcripts per million. And the mapping is complex. So we want to test that question. Can we use a modified autoencoder to uncover the correlations and discover the mappings? And so the autoencoder that we used is um, here. Each layer is a linear unit. Um, between the linear units, you have an activation of a ReLU, um, then back batch normalization before the output layer, and loss is sum of squared errors. The training set is 80%, and then the validation is 10%, test is 10%, created by random sampling without replacement. So our test uh, data set was 1618 bulk RNA-seq uh, sequence read archive data sets, um, and this, these are guide A results. Um, in particular, 
I want to note that it does a really good job um, with predicting um, with a 0.93 correlation. And um, the others will leave as we are running short on time. So the runtime efficiency of L R Callisto, which really allows it to be expanded to use across a lot of data and moving into the HPC use um, versus really getting stuck with the other tools or trying to use it with very large data sets um, is here. And you can see that L R Callisto just is a fraction of the runtime and also a fraction of the memory usage, which isn't shown here. So I'd like to thank Lara Pachter, Ali Mortazavi, Barbara Wald, as well as everybody else I've worked with, um, and all of those at DOE CSGF for um, all of their support and funding, as well as the IGVF for funding me. So um, thank you.